Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you watched the show before, typically we focus on different topics that would help you be a better boater. It could be anchoring, it could be docking, man overboard, insurance, a whole variety of topics. But every now and then we take a detour and we look at interesting boats. They could be Coast Guard boats, they could be electric boats, hovercraft, or they could be antique and classic boats. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Up, today we're up at Lake Winnipesaukee in uh, New Hampshire, and we've got some really interesting old and classic boats, which I think you're going to enjoy seeing and learning about. So let's get right into it. Well, Glenn, you know, this is just a really interesting and pretty classic boat. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. It's a 1928 um, Chris Craft 26-foot sedan mm -hmm. model, um, that model number 634. Okay, okay. And the sand stand because it has the roof here? Correct. And the, yeah. and the cockpit is covered with the roof. Um, there's only one 26-footer that I'm aware of that's complete and running in the water, and you're looking at oh, it. Oh, is that right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Now, um, Glenn, how, when did you get the boat? Well, how long have you had the I boat? I bought the boat about seven years ago, mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, in a state of disrepair that required a fairly significant restoration. However, everything was with the boat. All the hardware is okay. original. Yeah. Uh, the um, engine was or is original. Um, so it was a good place to start. Yes. It took about three years to restore it. About three years. What made you select this particular boat? You know, it's a rare boat, but there's other wood boats out there. Was there something about this boat that you liked in particular? Is that's the one I want to put my time and effort into? Well, um, the main reason is because I'm partially crazy, and when okay. I see a wooden boat that <laughs> uh, is interesting and um, unique, I uh, especially one that's complete, um, I, I thought that that was the one that should be restored and brought back to uh, its original glory. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Right. Um, it was originally owned by the Valvoline Oil Company family, oh. and it was shipped to Moosehead Lake. Mm -hmm. Its original name was Dispute 3. <laughs> Dispute 3. And there's a story okay. that goes with that. I'll try to be quick. All right. Uh, the, the Valvoline Oil Company family settled internal family disputes with mm -hmm. an item of luxury. Okay. And All this right. was dispute three, so <laughs> we're pretty sure that this was the third major dispute right. in the family. Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> well, Glenn, as we're looking from the bow back towards us, I think there's a number of interesting features on this boat. Um, one of them is the, the fold-out windshield. I always like those fold-out windshields. Right. It's, uh, it's a unique feature um, because it opens from the bottom up. Yes. Um, and it really provides uh, some nice, when you open it, airflow as yeah. you're crossing the water. Right. Um, a lot of people think that you're inside and uh, because of the black top, when yeah. the sun's beating on it, it might be hot, but it's right. not at all. Right. Okay. And there's um, crank down windows um, on uh, both sides of the boat. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And um, so you'll crack those a little bit and the wind flow is very nice. Uh, the windshield also has a windshield um, wiper. Oh. Made by Bosch. Bosch, okay. Which is very um, unique. It was a German product and yes. uh, it's original to the boat. Is that right? Correct. And the uh, hardware is uh, all um, German silver, oh, which is, is a mix of nickel and silver. Okay. So. Um, Why do you suppose they did that? Well, um, I'm not 100% sure, but it was certainly an expensive idea right. and um, <laughs> right. not the best idea from the standpoint of keeping it clean because it's hard to keep clean. Okay. But because it's original, I uh, use my best efforts to keep it that way and Makes sense. Um, show people what things were like when they were built back in 1928. Now, was this was this a hatch, if you will, this always on slides? Yes. This hatch is forward? the sliding roof, uh -huh. so you can open that up to oh. get in and out. Oh. Yeah. And when you're inside, you can close it. It's got the... Oh, you can uh, some, lock it down. Some lock downs for yeah. you. Yeah. We got doors here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it appears to be difficult to get in and out of, but it's really not. It's not. That's nope. very interesting. Nope. Yeah. And it's an enjoyable um, boat to be inside. You feel like you're riding in a... Rolls-Royce limousine when you're inside. Is that right? Wow. Wow. Yeah, it does look pretty. Yeah. Well, Paul, there's some interesting details I'd like to show you here in the boat. Um, first, the um, key is original to the boat, mm -hmm. and that's just to the left of the steering wheel. Yeah. The steering wheel is original to the boat. Mm -hmm. There's um, some controls here 
um, on the uh, in the center of the steering wheel. Yes. And um, one is for throttle, and the mm -hmm. other one is for choke. Okay. Um, and how about the instrumentation panel? The that inst looks pretty original. The instrumentation panel is fully original. Um, mm -hmm. It it uh, is a rare find because usually they're not. Um, they don't survive in boats of this age. Right. They're usually replaced with modern instruments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right in front of the um, instrument panel is a cigar holder. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. as you can see, I have a cigar in there. Chris uh, Smith, who was the owner of Chris Craft, yes, um, liked to smoke cigars. So a lot of his boats had cigar holders in them, along with a cigar lighter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I haven't um, connected because um, I'm a little concerned about safety on that issue. Right. Right. Um, we have an original um, rear view mirror with beveled glass. Mm -hmm. We have an original uh, windshield wiper that uh, is a Bosch windshield wiper, which was a product from Germany. Oh, yeah. Um, that they must have imported for that purpose. Yeah. Um, a lot of interesting details in here, aren't there? Yes, there's some window cranks. I don't know if you can get a shot of those, but mm -hmm. um, they turn the windows up and down just like you do in a car. Well, Glenn, you know, along with the fact that this boat is interesting from being so old and being so original, another interesting aspect seems to be this engine that we're looking at here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. It's um, the original 1928 Kermath that came with the boat. Mm -hmm. It's a six-cylinder, a flathead six-cylinder. Yeah. It's got a five-inch bore and a five-and-a-half-inch stroke. Oh, uh, wait, smoke. <laughs> for those techies, um, that means that the boat um, turns relatively slow revolutions uh -huh. um, but it has a lot of torque and it drives the boat oh, I bet. at about 35 miles an hour at, does it really at about 2,000 rpm how many horsepower did you say it was it's 150 horse 150 and it drives it that fast it does that's amazing just like you say those big cylinders <laughs> they really amazing. drive the boat well and it's a very comfortable riding boat because of the torque and the power that this engine provides it's got some weight to it too right this is no lightweight engine right here correct right? i can't tell you how much it weighs but i'm guessing around <laughs> 1500 pounds we want to try to lift it out right right and this is a carbureted, I guess, is it? Yes, or? it's dual carburetors. Mm -hmm. um, it um, has the original um, fuel pumps oh, that yeah. are in the boat, but they're not hooked up. No. And that was another safety feature I've that I decided that. to pass on. <laughs> right. But it's there um, for historic sake so that everybody can see how the boat was originally um, fueled. Yeah. So we put an electronic fuel pump in it just for safety purposes. That's the way to go. Yeah. Now, I'm not familiar with that brand. Were they pretty big into industrial motors back in those days? They were. Kermath um, manufactured a lot of engines for the Navy. Oh, they did. Um, okay. So they were... Um, they got kind of this Navy gray going correct. on there. Correct. Right. Yes. Right. Um, some of the features that you see on the boat are um, more aesthetic advancements that um, are p particular to uh, a boater like myself, mm -hmm. um, like the copper tubing, right? right. Um, some of the brass, yeah. All of that would have been painted gray. <laughs> painted gray, right? Uh, everything was pretty basic and simple back then. Yes, but uh, but we prettied it up a little bit. Well, Glenn, we're here in the uh, the rear cockpit of your boat, which looks like a pretty comfortable place to be. It is, although I don't get to ride there that often. <laughs> My know. wife likes it back here. I know what you mean. I'm always driving. You're always driving. I do the same thing. Well, you know what uh, strikes me as we look at this rear deck is the hardware. It's almost got like ears of some type on the uh, fuel fills. It's, you don't see something like that these days. Right. They're um, fairly fancy and fairly rare. Mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, also convenient to open and close them while you're grabbing onto these little um, yeah. rabbit ear kind of the looking ear things. things. Yeah, yeah. But these are also German silver. I thought they looked like that, yeah. Um, and uh, the deck. Um, was replaced. Oh, That's was. the only thing on the boat that was replaced. Is that right? And the transom. Okay. Um, the transom was replaced because when um, we got the boat, it looked like somebody had backed it up into something and broke the <laughs> broke the structures and the Ooh. and the boards. Must have really hammered it. So. so when we replaced it, we also changed the name. Oh, what um, was it before? Do you know? It was Dispute Three. Oh, Dispute Three. We talked we about talked that about earlier. That. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. So I named it Heaven's Bench, um, Heaven's Bench after the name of a mountain bike trail in Burke, Vermont, because oh. my wife and I mountain bike a lot. Really? And that's our favorite trail. It's yeah. a beautiful spot. Yeah. It fits the boat. Yeah. It's a beautiful boat. Yeah. Just uh, all comes together, huh? It does. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that there's two fillers for the yeah. gas tanks. There yeah. were two gas tanks that were original to the boat. They were in the boat. We mm. took those out for safety okay. reasons and okay. built new ones. Right. <laughs> um, the original gas tanks 
drew from the bottom of the tank, mm -hmm. which is also a, a no-no. Oh, I see. Um, okay. So we turned that around, and now they draw from the top for All safety right. reasons, so you don't empty the gas into your bilge and right. have a problem. Yeah, you don't have to go heaven early, right? Correct. Right. The other feature here is this um, flagpole, which is um, original to the boat. Uh -huh. And the globe is a fairly rare globe. It's a glass globe. Um, those get broken often. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're hard to replace. I bet um, they are. And they're not manufactured anywhere anymore. Hmm. Um, even in, you know, there are some aftermarket ones, but they're not this style. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And it really has, it really sets off the boat. Yes. Really nice. Yeah, it's great. Great to have all the features um, that are that original. Yeah. Well, Dick, this is a, a beautiful boat that we're on here this, this morning, and it's a 36-foot Goodhue Hawkins, right? Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about the background of the boat? Well, it was built in uh, 1910 for Tom Plant, who's the gentleman who put the castle and the clouds together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the biggest of the Laker series that the Goodhue and Hawkins boatyard made. Yeah. Well, right here in, in uh, Wolfboro, right? In Wolfboro, yep. correct. Yep. And um, there are six of these boats left. Five of them are still on Winnipesaukee. Mm -hmm. This was the biggest one. And um, Why did they call them Lakers? Is it because uh, my, uh, my understanding was that they were long and narrow, well, it's a, and they it's were designed a, for the choppy, it's a choppy water launch. Around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and these were referred to as long deck launches. Long deck launches, obviously. okay. All right. And, uh, for some reason, they got tagged Lakers yeah. here. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Um, it's a it's an unusual term. And this is, do you know what the planking on this is? Is it? Uh, it's all mahogany. All mahogany, and the ribs are ribs are oak. Oak, right? Steam bent oak. It's that built much like a canoe. It is. Okay. Sides are cedar. Yeah. And um, that's why they were painted. Yeah. And how long? When did you buy it? Early '90s. Early '90s. What is it? In good shape? Was it in nice shape? Or it worked. It worked, okay. <laughs> it worked, it leaked, and uh, we sort of restored it backwards. We started with the decks, because they were in trouble. Okay. And uh, we got the decks replaced and rebuilt the motor and used it, and I was very fortunate to have a boathouse set up where I could launch it off a trailer and hang it for a couple of weeks to let the wood tighten up so it wouldn't go to the bottom. Nice. And uh, that was fine until a couple of years ago when that facility went away. <laughs> And so last year the boat was out of the water most of the most of the summer, and it had all of the ribs replaced, everything right. below the water line okay. was redone, and right now it's bone dry. Well, Dick, as we're here in the cockpit, we're looking forward to the bow. A couple things strike me. One is the, the length. It's a very long forward section to this boat. The narrowness, uh, the gleam of the the varnish, and some of the hardware you've got here seems unusual. Like I'm looking at that cleat up there, and it looks like it almost has a hollow, right. hollow center to it, doesn't it? They made a lot of them like that. Did they? Just yeah. not solid casting. Just not solid, but they made them hollow. So that that would tell me that that's pretty original then. Yes. Yeah. And how about the horn? What's going on with that horn? I don't think I've seen a horn like that before. The horn is a, a about a 1912 Rolls Royce horn. They used to mount it on the running boards. So. Okay and like that, and it just seemed appropriate. Does it still work? Sure does. Huh. Can we show? <laughs> still works. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> and then, uh, then you come back here, and this is where the engine is, underneath Correct. these hatches. Correct. Yep. And then this windshield, this windshield is pretty impressive. Uh, did these boats come standard with the windshields, or was this an option, or how'd that work? No, none of the boats had windshields originally. This was made by the um, second owner of the boat, he had a, a tall admiral's hat, and he used to like to wear it when he ran the boat. He had a convertible top, yeah. so he wanted the tall windshield, so when he drove the boat, there was room for the hat. <laughs> well, so. it fits right in. It looks, looks like a, a standard piece of equipment for this boat. Well, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it and is. And the little wings make a big difference. Oh, do they? They funnel the wind in. Yeah. When you want it, Yeah. or keep it out, and when it sprays, which it'll do if the wind is blowing crossways. Right, right. <laughs> Keeps you dry. It helps. Nice. Well, Dick, we're here in the cockpit looking at the helm and the instrumentation. The wheel has kind of got an unusual shape. It's got all these different angles as, as opposed to being round. Do, do you think that's original? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what are these controls in the center? Um, this is throttle and that's choke. Okay. All right. So the easy, easy to access and the, the shifters on the floor. Correct. All right. And then how about the instruments? You know, these days you see all matched instrumentation for the manufacturers. In the old days, did they use more of an eclectic mix sometimes? Correct, and 
probably some of them weren't even there. <laughs> um, right. But when we put the boat back together, the, the instruments that were in it was a real hodgepodge of stuff yeah. that didn't fit. Didn't want to use that. And we had uh, access to some instruments that are period mm -hmm. and uh, seemed correct. So. Yeah. So you had a tachometer, oil pressure, and uh, charging. Correct. Amps. Yeah. Yeah, the most important stuff. You know, I think uh, these older classic boats, they had a lot of distinguishing features, and, and among them being the finish of the cockpit and, and some of the upholstery. Now, this upholstery here, you can't see it very well on camera, but there's, there's uh, some, some things behind that, right? What, what can right. you tell us about um, that? They obviously didn't have foam back then, and right. uh, horsehair was a very common stuffing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we restored the seat backs, they were done uh, buttoned and with horsehair which was difficult to find somebody willing to do it. <laughs> it was. And the, the seat bases are K-pop filled, which has been around a long time. It's a flotation Right. I, I think of that when I think of that, I think of the Navy. They use a lot of K-pop, yeah. So if we pan the, uh, the cockpit here, you can see it's just beautiful mahogany, relatively narrow beam, all finished off, so you don't see the inside of the hull at all. So a lot of detail on a boat like this, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you had the rear seating area back there. That was the same thing with the horsehair in it, was it? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how about the dryness of the boat? How was the boat ride? If you're going dead into waves, it rides absolutely wonderfully. Yes. You don't feel anything. Really? Yeah, because um, it's got that displacement hull to it. Because it's narrow and round, round bottom, if you're broadside to waves, there's a fair amount of... Get a little roll. Rock yeah. and roll, and yeah. you can tell just in the shot how the boat's tilted because we're both standing over here. Right, right, right. Um, so it's, it's sensitive to that, but basically it rides wonderfully. I think we'll get the camera pointed at the engine, and, and uh, Chris Craft at that time made their own engines, right, or marinized them. Right. So it's not unusual to see an older Chris Craft engine and an older Chris Craft boat, and sometimes they would turn out or be changed by the different owners along the way, right? Correct. Yeah, what can you tell us about this one? Well, this one came with the boat when I bought it, and as far as I know, it's the eighth engine that's been in it over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really a perfect, perfect power plant because these boats you can power them as much as you want, and they'll only go so fast. Right. Okay. And uh, this is a real nice combination of weight and power, so it does very, very nicely with the boat. Do you know what uh, uh, horsepower produces? 135 horsepower. 135 horsepower. Okay. It's about a 1936 engine. All right, and it's a six. Six owner. Yeah, boy, that's a, it's beautifully restored. So this is part of your restoration process. You have specialists go in and redo it for you. Yes. Yeah. I think you know one of the things I enjoy about these old classic boats is that each boat manufacturer had certain nuances that they had that are craft. Well, you could recognize them. And, and for the good Hugh Hawkins, you, we talked a little bit about the Hongo hardware, and and the shape of the transom is different than many boats. What, what was going on there? Well, a V-transom is just the way they designed them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think it has any real function. Isn't that funny? Yeah, just a design uh, aspect to it. Well, Gary, this is a very unusual Chris Craft that we're standing in here right now. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it, 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 it indeed is unusual. It's a 27-foot 1952 Chris Craft. They were designed with hard tops, and this one was special ordered without the hard top. As okay. you can see, we have an open, big cockpit boat. And yes. This was one of the largest open runabouts that Chris Craft ever made. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very roomy. So, um, do you know how many there were made? How many of these? Was it a popular well, model, a limited I, model? I, or? I tried to research how many of the semi-enclosed were made, mm -hmm. and in 1957, there were only 160 of them made. And okay. that would have, they would have been selling more in, in 57 than 52. I see, right. Because we were just recovering from the economy coming back after the war. Right. So I, I don't know the exact number, but I do know on this open uh, design here, without the hard top, we have not been able to find another one in the country. Okay. And I looked right. at uh, the Mariners Museum to research their records, and mm -hmm. there was there was none that we could find that had the build sheet that said ordered with the, the top deleted, which is the way this one was ordered. Mm -hmm. So there's a very rare bird. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Where did you get this? I found it here on Lake. Winnipeg. In fact, it was always been on Lake Winnipesaukee. It was mm -hmm. sold by Irwin Marine, mm -hmm. which is the oldest Chris Craft dealer in the country. Yeah. Right here in Lakeport, mm -hmm. and this boat served as a tour boat from a local motel just less than a half a mile from here. Wow. So the boat has always been right in this neighborhood. This is and that's, home. That's, that's what, and it's now, of course, it's, it stays at this boathouse here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. 
Now, Gary, you know, one of the things I liked about these older boats is they always had a design personality, if you will. They had a different shape and uh, maybe sometimes a function than some of the other manufacturers, different manufacturers that made them. Now, this particular boat has a bull nose on it, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, it does. And that's reminiscent of what, the late 50s, early 60s? No, actually, that the bull nose was brought to market by Chris Craft in the early 50s, and it only ran until 1957. And what I you see. were commenting on, this is very much like the automobile industry. During that period of time, all of the manufacturers had some signature look. Yeah. And the bull nose was definitely a signature look of Chris Craft. Absolutely. And this was in 1952. This is a a modified bullnose, it's not as aggressive as they got in the 55, 56, and 57. So right. this was the very beginning. Right, right, right. And then uh, moving back on the bow, I see you got a hatch. That's a nice way to get some light and air down into the cuddy, right? Yeah, that's a great hatch. It obviously opens up and flips out so you get ventilation down into the cuddy and there's a double berth down below. There is, okay. Uh, so that you can sleep on this boat as well. Okay. And I like, as we, as we look at the windshield here, uh, you've got the two panes and uh, I like the fact that they open. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great, and especially that they open from the bottom like that. You get a lot of good ventilation that comes up through. Mm -hmm. um, if you had a top on the boat, which we don't have right now, yeah. it could be very hot on a day, and you're going to get great breeze coming through. Right, there. right. So they thought about this when they were designing this boat. There's not a lot of thoughtful features to it. That's what's special about the people that restore and collect these. Is we're really celebrating their the design work and the mm -hmm. craftsmanship of generations past, mm -hmm. and and it's 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 fortunate that we've got new young people that are doing this these type of restorations. Well, Gary, behind me is a cuddy cabin, but but uh, it's got berths for two, but it's very difficult to show on camera. So we'll just right. go with the fact that it's very roomy and it's got a lot of good light and that sort of thing. And, Next, I think importantly on this boat is the whole helm setup with the steering wheel and instrumentation. It looks like you, it's set up for dual engines. That's correct. Right? What, what can you tell us about it? Well, one of the things that really you should look at that will ring a bell with everybody is this looks like an automotive steering wheel. Mm -hmm. it sure um, does. And in fact, it is. <laughs> um, this boat was manufactured in Michigan, as many of the boats of that period were. And of course, Chrysler and Ford and and General Motors, Chevrolet were all there. Right. So this this came from automotive. There's a lot of automotive fixtures that, that will be used on a boat. But mm -hmm. you'll notice that there's two tachometers for both engines and yes. two amp and two oil pressures. Yeah. Um, and this boat was special ordered with a fuel gauge. Um, act, believe it or not, in fact, when we look at one of my older boats, mm -hmm. I have a stick that goes down in the, right. in the gas tank. That was the official fuel gauge. Well, this, one, this one actually had a fuel gauge and that are very special for 1952 a speedometer. <laughs> yeah, that is, um, that's very these, unusual, yeah. These, these were all part of the build kit um, that okay. came with it. Well, you could check off yeah. in terms of what you want on the boat. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's neat about the twin screw having two engines mm -hmm. is you've got t twin throttles here. When you come into dock, you do not have to steer at all. You're just simply turning the engines back and forth and we're working, working them in reverse opposites and that positions the boat and moves it in a way that a single screw will not work. Very maneuverable. I want to go back to the instruments for just a second, Gary. Uh, uh, are these restored or rebuilt or what? Because that's an important part of the boat, the original hardware, right? Yeah, this, everything you see here, um, other than this this control here yeah, yeah. is original. It is okay. Um, and they the, the answer is they were they were all rebuilt mm -hmm. and calibrated so because they're important. You don't yes, want right. you don't want an old gauge that um, <laughs> isn't work, working right. accurately. Yeah. So these get rebuilt to exact specifications. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks beautiful. Really nice. Thank you. Well, Gary, you know I have a 24 footer back at home, and this is a 28 footer. Not much not much size in length yeah. difference difference in length, but beam and, and, and depth and so on, freeboard if you will. This has a very expansive cockpit. What, what's going on here? Yeah, proportionally, comparing your 25 foot or, or 24 foot that we'll look at next uh, to this 27 footer, proportionally they just get bigger and wider. <laughs> and this one is huge. This, yeah. You could have a ballroom dance on in here. And it, it's a people carrier. That's yeah. what the boat was originally ordered for. Okay. And um, this, this moves a lot of people to, to destinations where you want to go. and. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to ride in it. Yeah, so we get seat a couple up front, and then where we're standing here, a couple of chairs. As we move back through the cockpit, we've got a big engine boxes here where people yep. can sit, right? Yep. And if we go further back, there's more room back there. 
And then uh, finally, we had a big rear bench seat, which is what capacity for probably four, anyways, right? E easily four. You could fit six, six, six there if you wanted wanted to. In fact, right. what we find, and one of the reasons we haven't put seats in this area here mm -hmm. at chairs, mm -hmm. is people actually like to stand yes. stand with their elbow yes. here, just um, lean and relax. It's, it's relaxing. You're not sitting in one place. You're able to move around the boat, and the yeah. boat's big enough and stable enough that you can walk around. Right, right, and right. I'm not suggesting that every boat you should be walking around <laughs> in, but no. this one is so solid that, that people can and do walk around yeah. in them. That's a key key point of this boat. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it is. Well, Gary, with us, there were some unusual boat engine combinations with the older boats, and uh, some of them, you know, as I say, were surprising. This looks like it's got a couple of six-cylinder Chryslers in it. Can you tell us a little bit about the power here? Actually, actually they're not Chryslers. Oh, um, they are Chryslers. These, this is a, a Hercules engine that Hercules. Chris Craft marinized. Oh, okay. And it's called a Chris Craft Marine. Chris Craft Marine. Um, and it's a straight flathead a uh, straightforward six-cylinder engine mm -hmm. puts out 95 horsepower, which you'd say, "My God, how can you, <laughs> right. how can you power a boat this big with 295 horsepower?" Doesn't seem like much. Doesn't no. seem like you could. No. But, but these engines have incredible torque. Do they? Um, and they also re work in reverse rotation. There's a left-handed and a right-handed rotation. Mm -hmm. So every they're 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 working with each other. Yes. And you can harmonize them. If you remember when we took a ride in this boat, yeah. We got the two of them so they were harmonized. They sound like just one engine. Right. And when they work in synchronized like that. They're just pushing out the torque. You don't have to have high RPMs, but there's lots of lots of push from them. And you, did you say these were the original engines? Yeah, both the engines are, are original wow. serial numbers. Serial numbers match um, the plate that's on the other engine hatch, but yeah. you would be able to see the plates and also the engine build sheet from yeah. the factory show that these are the original engines. Wow, they're, they're in beautiful shape and they perform well. Do they perform the same or is there any, uh, do the engines have personalities? Oh, they have personalities. They do. There's definitely, they have personalities. They're exactly the same. Yeah machinery and equipment mm -hmm. everything is exact mm -hmm. but starting one and starting the other one you have to choke one you have to mar give throttle another one yeah and they eventually light up and, and work well but yeah. once they're warmed up then they, they work very smooth but it's interesting each engine is a little bit different Isn't that funny yeah yeah well, Gary you know a lot of uh, antique and classic boats have names that have different histories with them different stories behind them and this boat's no different can you tell us a little bit about that yeah, the name of this boat is Sachem. Yeah. And this area of New Hampshire, particularly this waterway right here, was highly populated with Indians mm -hmm. in the 16, 1700s. Mm -hmm. And there was a chief named Sachem who negotiated peace with the white people and actually helped settle this entire area. And yeah. in fact, the Weir's Beach and the Weir's Channel is named after the, the Indians fishing weirs, which they caught fish in this, this area here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this was just a small stream. Yeah. Um, and we felt that it was appropriate to celebrate Chief Sachem and put the name to it. Absolutely.